Uh, and sorry if uh, anyone is having difficulty uh, seeing me. Uh, I think we're having some problems with our uh, video right now. But uh, yeah, again, thank you for joining me. And uh, thank you for talking a little bit about uh, digital documents and uh, the tools your students are going to need for finals. Um, like Venus had said, I'm uh, Daniel Godfrey. I'm a technical marketing engineer at Foxwood Education. Uh, Foxwood Software, if you've heard of us, so we are a PDF editor uh, company. We also work on eSign and other digital document uh, technologies and products. Uh, but yeah, today we're going to be focusing on uh, the specific tools that students uh, use uh, most commonly for uh, important documents, for tests, for uh, homework, for studying, uh, for all sorts of things. Uh, administration needs too for uh, filling out documents for, um, you know, uh, uh, for different yeah, admin usage uh, for campus campus needs. Uh, so yeah, all sorts of uh, different uh, needs that students have for for the digital documents. We're going to go over that and how they can uh, use our our tools specifically to, to uh, maximize their time and effort. There's a little bit about me again. Uh, again, I work for uh, uh, Fox Ed Education. Um, so we are a uh, education uh, wing of uh, Fox Ed Software. So, uh, so, you know, again, we uh, focus specifically on, uh, you know, education customers, on students, on teachers, on uh, faculty, um, you know, who are deploying our solutions across their campus for, you know, for all, their, all of their users. Um, you know, they find that, uh, you know, PDF editor is a uh, universal tool that education, uh, you know, in every every aspect really, uh, you know, needs to have. Um, so a lot of people often just think of uh, PDF editing tools as only administration office needs, but you know, students uh, and teachers very much need uh, the tools that uh, you know PDF editors provide, and um, you know, often need some of the more more robust and advanced tools. And uh, so what what I do is I work with schools um, to not only help deploy their software and, uh, and and our solutions onto their campus, but also uh, figure out how to use the software to the to you know its full capacity and uh, you know get the most out of their out of their purchase. Um, I also work with schools uh, to help uh, design uh, their solutions uh, around their uh, current document workflows and uh, you know around integrations um, that they might need. Um, so yeah, but today we're we're specifically talking about students and how they use PDF tools. So uh, actually, um, this or last year. Um, we, I think I may have misspoke uh, on the year, um, we commissioned a survey by Hanover Research that uh, to, to help us better understand uh, student document usage um, in school and, you know, how they're, how they're using these documents, what tools they're using, how often they're using them. Um, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of, again, a lot of uh, people think that, you know, these PDF tools are, you know, only used by administrators for, you know, signing, signing doc, important documents or, uh, you know, creating uh, large, uh, you know, um, um, uh, files for for uh, you know uh, business use and things like that, but realistically, more than fifty percent of students used uh, PDF tools at least once a week. So it is uh, you know a tool that they are using uh, you know often for for editing documents, for converting documents, um, uh, sending sending for review, sending for submission. Um, so students more than fifty percent are finding um, that they're doing this. Um, you know, more than once a week. So it's clearly an important tool that they use. Um, you know, there are very few tools that students use, you know, more uh, this often. So PDF editing tools are definitely one of them. 24% uh, use them at least every two to three weeks. Uh, so again, that's about 75% of, of uh, students are using a, docu a PDF document tool uh, within one month. And 100% of the students we we surveyed uh, used it within the last 12 months. So you can guarantee that your students is going to uh, your student is going to need a uh, PDF solution. Um, and really, the question is is where they're going to get that solution from. Um, is it going to be provided from the school? Is it going to be is it going to be something they're going to have to search for themselves and figure it out? Um, you know, th that's kind of the question we want to want to answer. Um, so what free tools are students using for PDFs? So like I said, uh, students who aren't given, you know, full PDF editors like Fox and, and Adobe um, and, other, and other kind of robust uh, solutions do have to find um, their own solutions that meet their needs. Um, so these solutions are often, you know, free PDF editors online, um, which have a lot of uh, issues or sometimes uh, some issues in terms of, um, you know, your their capacity to, uh, uh, you know, actually uh, do the, give you the features that you need, so they don't, they're not as feature rich. Uh, sometimes they they lock their main features behind paywalls. Um, you know they have they're filled with uh, advertisements, and uh, you know they're 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 not necessarily uh, meeting all the needs that the students have um, for their PDF editor. So Foxit does come in with a, a free option uh, that are that is uh, you know much more feature rich than these options. And that's our free PDF editor um, online for schools. 
So we're currently offering this uh, option, um, you know, to to any education institute, uh, any teacher or administrator could sign their students up for for uh, this option, um, and it's equally as free as you know all these other all these other options here. Um, but we actually provide you know full complete solution set. So um, you know so. Uh, Students are going to need these 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 tools at some point in their in their in their education. Some point in the year, they're going to have to be converting documents. Um, the question really is: Are we going to you know have them go find their own solutions and hope that it's uh, you know not uh, you know taking their data or you know um, you know having them click on unnecessary advertisements, or are we going to find them a solution that you know is the complete complete package, uh, you know, fully robust uh, PDF editing tools, um, and is also free for them to use as well. Um, so that's where free, uh, Fox and PDF Editor comes in. It is a free solution for students right now um, when schools uh, sign up with us. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know, what what PDF tools are students using today? Um, so in our research, we found that the the most common uh, PDF tools are the ones you might think of. Uh, you know, document storage and file management. So accessing um, their documents from online um, and uh, yeah, you know, dir uh, directly from from their uh, you know Google Google Drives or OneDrive. Um, you know, as you can see, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of PDF editors can can um, you know comp accomplish this, um, uh, as well as with uh, converting PDF documents to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, HTML. Um, you know, th these are some features that not all all these online documents handle the same way. Uh, as you can see, with uh, some of the most popular online um, uh, resources like PDF uh, Filler, uh, PDF Soda, PDF uh, Online, uh, PDF Dot Online. Uh, there are restrictions for for what you can do with uh, conversions and uh, you know more advanced features. So uh, you know PDF filler doesn't allow for GDoc conversion or HTML. Uh, PDF Soda doesn't have GDocs. Uh, neither does PDF Online, and they actually only give you two free actions a day. So if you're converting multiple documents, you know you're 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 only going to be able to do a couple in a, in a day. Um, yeah, same thing with uh, editing um, images. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, places have. Uh, the ability to edit images, but they don't all provide um, things like OCR. So when you're scanning an image to PDF, um, you know, you don't always get searchable or, or editable text, or at least for free. You know, they might hide those behind paywalls uh, that you, you know, will have to pay for. Um, and one feature that uh, is definitely, you know, very unique to PDF editor, uh, Fox uh, editor online is our collaboration tool. Um, so uh, these other PDF editors don't have the ability to do real-time collaboration. So something you might see on, uh, um, Google Documents, where you know you share a document and you can see uh, you know updated uh, collaborations from other students, from you know a teacher or whatever. Um, you know that that uh, type of feature is actually only available in PDF Editor Online compared to these. Um, and it's not just these features; these are just some of these are uh, the the features that we ask students you know which ones they use the most, and they they stated that these are the ones. There's a lot of you know advanced features and you know maybe esoteric features that are used in uh, specific scenarios. Um, that you know are definitely not available on these you know free uh, editors and are can only be found um, with a PDF you know more robust PDF editor. So things like that might be uh, accessibility. So you know creating accessible documents for uh, students with uh, you know um, a vision impairment. Um, and uh, you know uh, there are, again many many other uh, uh, very robust uh, kind of uh, full feature set uh, PDF editing uh, tools that you know most most PDF editor or most online PDF editors aren't going to provide. So what tools will help your students save time and effort this uh, final season? So we're going to go over a couple of tools in uh, uh, Fox uh, PDF Editor um, that, uh, you know, are free for schools to uh, release to their students. Um, so, you know, it's just as free as going on to a PDF, you know, finding finding your online solution. Uh, but we're going to find, you know, more advanced tools that, you know, those, those other solutions don't have. Uh, so firstly, we're going to talk about uh, converting photocopies and images to searchable and editable text uh, for easier searching and archiving. Uh, so that's actually creating, um, you know, a PDF document from an image, uh, whether that uh, be, you know, from a uh, a scanner from like a library, so like a you know very official scanner, or something, you know, that might just be from uh, your cell phone, which is a very common way that students digitize their documents these days because you know it's convenient. Most students have cell phones, and uh, you know it's fast. They can do it. they they know how to use them, and you know a full a full copy machine, you know, is is kind of a thing of the past for a lot of students. So you know they're they're just pulling images off their cell phone. And uh, you know they they want to they want to organize them they want to they want to edit them they want to search for them and so I'll show you some uh, tools for that um, searching multiple PDF documents for keywords so uh, you know once you've actually created these documents how do you uh, search through them in an effective way rather than you know one by one or uh, you know looking for a specific keyword and, um, you know we have advanced tools for that as well. 
Um, another great tool is uh, exporting uh, highlighted text uh, to Excel for organize or uh, to Excel and uh, text files actually uh, for organizing quotations. So you know this is a great tool for students who are putting together a uh, report or a um, a essay that requires you know highlight or requires uh, annotations and uh, and uh, you know direct quotes from from authors. You know we can actually uh, organize those a little bit easier with with this tool. Um, we also are going to show uh, organizing multiple pages into uh, onto a single uh, PDF page. So this might be uh, very helpful for organizing, uh, you know, uh, images of your notes into a kind of more organized uh, manner where you can actually add extra comments. You can add uh, annotations and, uh, uh, you know, uh, scribbling from from a, a digital pen and, uh, you know, other features like that. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make that a little bit easier for for um, uh, for note taking. Um, also, uh, collaborating on uh, PDF documents with a group and uh, receive real-time updates. Like I said, this is definitely a feature that you're not going to find in a lot of uh, online PDF editors, um, and it's great for the you know the current environment where we often have uh, you know uh, entirely uh, online classes or hybrid classes, and uh, you know we still need to collaborate with other students. Um, so you know you know having having a tool where you can uh, look at a document together and share it uh, and see see real-time updates is uh, you know very very helpful for students today. Um, so yeah, so let's check out uh, these features. I'm gonna actually bring up our solution here. All right, I'm gonna go with a, a quick um, overview of uh, what you actually get. Uh, you know, full the full feature set for uh, Fox and PDF Editor. This is our uh, PDF Editor um, uh, uh, desktop version for Windows. So this is this is an, a, a a version that is available for free for students uh, right now when uh, when their school signed them up for the the free licensing deal. Um, so you know we uh, this this is a this is a solution that's uh, similar to Adobe Acrobat in terms of feature sets. So you're gonna uh, you're gonna find a, you know a wide wide set of features. It's also very easy for students to kind of get used to because we uh, use the Windows um, uh, ribbon elements uh, uh, license. So we ha it, it has a very similar feel to a lot of other document editors. You won't have to worry too much about students asking a lot of questions about you know where to find certain tools because it's it's something that they've used before it's some uh, you know in terms of you know the general the ui and ux um so you know it's something that they're used to something that they can pick up pretty easily and you know most students are pretty good with technology so it's not something you know most people have to worry about these days uh but yeah so uh you know the 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 tool set is uh you know it's it's wide and varied uh no so converting tools of course you know so you're going to be able to convert from uh all your main um all your main file types, uh, you know, the full Microsoft suite, uh, HTML uh, documents. So, you know, you can actually pull a website directly from the internet and start uh, updating it with uh, notes and um, um, and editing the text if you need to. Um, you know, full, full editing capabilities. So that's for uh, editing text, editing objects, uh, adding shapes and images. Uh, web links, bookmarks, all that, uh, you know, can be, uh, you know, easily, easily embedded into a document, including uh, audio and video. Um, so, you know, you can actually embed uh, other file types, uh, as well as uh, 3D, 3D images. So, you know, for, for students using CAD um, and, you know, other, you know, that, that's becoming more and more important for digital design, you can actually embed uh, one of those images directly into a document. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of useful tools. Um, of course, organizing, you know, you're going to expect uh, any of your uh, uh, PDF editors to do, uh, you know, basic organizing skills. So uh, extracting documents, uh, reversing them or turning them in case they're scanned um, or, or, you know, adding, adding, uh, you know, uh, backgrounds, uh, headers, footers for, for research papers and more advanced tools like uh, Bates numbering uh, for, yeah, like for, you know, graduates, graduate level often needs uh, those more advanced, uh, more advanced features that, you know, uh, that someone, uh, reading through a research document would expect to see, um, you know, full set of co uh, commenting tools. So for collaboration or for, uh, for review or for studying, you know, we have a full set of uh, note taking tools for like highlighting, uh, adding notes, adding type uh, or adding like uh, text uh, directly to the document, um, you know, call out boxes, um, highlights, all that um, are available uh, in our comment section. Um, form filling. So, you know, when, uh, when they come up against uh, documents that have uh, fillable forms, that's often for administration uh, usages, you know, we'll have uh, documents with, uh, you know, fillable form fields. They can do a lot of things like uh, extract the information directly from those form fields, um, you know, create their own form fields if, they, if there isn't one available. Um, all that can be, can be done through this uh, tool. 
uh, protection tools, not very used uh, often by students, but you know there are some useful tools like uh, uh, marking for redaction for their private information um, and setting up a password for for their documents just in case they want an extra layer of protection. Um, Fox and eSign is also uh, directly, um, again, not, not too used uh, uh, with our students, but uh, they do have access if they if you have important documents that they need to sign, you know, they can they can uh, actually sign them easily uh, through our solutions. And finally, uh, accessible uh, sharing accessibility. So sharing, you know, sending sending for review, uh, sending for email, um, you know, uh, uh, sending into your uh, uh, document management system. So we actually have a full suite of document management systems that you can um, add. Um, so, you know, you have, of course, your Dropbox, Google, Box, um, OneDrive, all, all the, all the you know, most popular uh, document management systems. And yeah, finally, accessibility. So, you know, for, for schools that have requirements for accessible documents, I know there are some schools that for their graduate level students require um, documents to be uh, made accessible uh, if they're going to be posted online. So, you know, the, that can be in a very, very difficult process and it can be expensive to find tools that uh, do that. But we're actually offering a tool that is entirely free for students in, uh, in situations like that. All right, but I'm going to go over some a uh, little bit more specifics here and show you how some of these tools work. Um, so one of one of the uh, major uh, usage of uh, you know PDF editors is converting. Um, so no, we we convert from all different file types, of course. Um, but uh, one one thing that uh, you know uh, a robust solution like this does that a lot of other online solutions don't do is take documents that are uh, flat documents, so like image based documents like this one right here. This is this would be uh, you know kind of like what would happen if you scanned in a textbook. We know. Um, a lot of uh, schools offer free textbooks to their students um, through libraries, and you know they they might need to uh, copy a chapter, or copy a page to you know take home uh, with them or or you know study. Um, but you know a lot of uh, you know your your average um, you know scanner is not going to necessarily convert this into uh, editable text. So you know your PDF editor can do that actually very easily. Uh, so like as you see right here, it's just uh, an image uh, file. Um, nothing is searchable. You know, like we can't. Can't search models right there. You know, nothing, nothing comes up. Uh, but all you have to do is actually just uh, click this uh, quick recognition button right here. Um, so yeah, what it does is walk through your documents and uh, converts all of the text into searchable text. Um, so this is great for studying, of course. If you if you know there's a concept that you need in a book um, or or a document, but you know you don't want to read through the entire document to find it, or entire book to find it. Um, you know, this is of course you know very very useful tool. Um, so yeah, it just takes a couple of seconds to run through the the full document. But as you can see, oh, still running through. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, it, it's it's uh, yeah, converting converting all these uh, uh, all this text into searchable text. You can also convert it into editable text. Um, so in scenarios where you might actually need to change the the text of a document, or you know want to want to create an update, or or you know mess with mess with an image or something like that, you can actually uh, turn it into uh, editable text. But now, as we can see, um, the document is now searchable. So we can uh, actually search for this. So now uh, not only is it searchable in our PDF editor, but when we um, uh, save it into our file system, it'll also be searchable that way. Um, so, you know, when you're looking through your, your many documents, you'll be able to actually uh, find your document based on the text available uh, in the document. Um, so yeah, so a lot of uh, you know great, great uh, things we could do with this uh, with this text now that we actually have it searchable, of course, um, not only as it's searchable, but it's also editable. Um, or commentable, at least right now. Um, you can you can make it editable if you uh, take one more step, but we just actually made it searchable just to save on uh, some time here. Um, but yeah, so uh, as you can see, you know we could add highlights to these uh, to this text. Um, so now now this specific text is you know highlightable. Um, we could also when we when we you know we can extract the text of course, copy and paste. Um, you know if we need to uh, you know create a quote or um, you know something like that. Um, yeah, we could also. Um, yeah, we could also add, uh, you know, notes to notes to this document that we, uh, you know, if we find an area that is especially important, but we need to, you know, mark why we find it important. Uh, but yeah, so you can do a quick note and then just add uh, important text that you need, like, you know, here is something important. Um, yeah, so, uh, so uh, you know, you can go back later and, uh, you know, see, see why you felt like that was uh, an important note to take. Um, on top of that, you can actually... Um, um, extract these these notes uh, into uh, a. Um, let me actually also add some text here.
So if you want to, you know, if you want to get a view of the uh, notes you've taken, you can actually just go to your summarized comment section right here. So there's a little little button under the comment section, um, and it gives you a little uh, summary of, or gives you some options about the summary of your of uh, all your pages. Um, so if you just want pages containing, oh, you, if you don't want to include pages containing no comments, you just mark that right here, um, and then once you click OK. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll give you a breakdown of uh, all your comments. So, you know, the notes you've taken, where where you've taken them, you know, where your highlights are, what notes you've added to there. Um, so it's a quick breakdown, uh, you know, save you a little bit of time to go over the notes you've saved um, and, and where they are. So if this is a very large document, you know, this is obviously just one page. Uh, but if there's a large document where, you know, you, with multiple chapters, uh, it might save you a lot of time to see what notes you've written and, and what chapter go straight there rather than having to look through every single note. Um, and see, you know, which one was important or not. Um, so yeah, uh, so digitizing your notes definitely saves saves students uh, tons of time. Uh, but yeah, so uh, rather than just look through one document, though, now that we've actually um, can't do that. Um, now that we've actually OCR'd this, we can uh, you know uh, view it with a batch of documents. So let's do some advanced search uh, function here. Let me save this first. So I'm going to show off a little bit of uh, how advanced uh, uh, searching can actually help you save time when, when looking through not only one document, but looking through uh, multiple documents. Um, so right here in my uh, search category, where we uh, you know did a single single word search, you can actually click here to the left and do a more advanced search. Um, so it'll, it'll bring up a little uh, tab right here. Um, so yeah, so this is, uh, you know, if we want to just uh, search the current document, of course, we can do that. Uh, but if we want to uh, do multiple documents, we, uh, you know, like that, that uh, might be helpful if you have multiple books that you're looking through um, or multiple assignments that you, you know, want to find certain information from, um, you know, you can actually search through multiple documents at the same time. So um, all, uh, let's, let's do all PDF documents in a certain folder. So, um, yeah, you can browse, browse your, uh, you know, your file, your file system pretty easily. Uh, go to, you know, whatever folder you've created. So I'm going to go to my, go to my documents. Then I've created a specific folder uh, right here. So I have uh, all of my documents that I've been studying for um, in, in this uh, in this folder. So I can actually just search through them all here. Um, and I got a couple extra um, options as well. So I can actually uh, match the exact word, of course. So like every letter being the exact same, um, match any of the words. So if, if we're creating spaces, we, we can you know match multiple words. Um, so, you know, save, save a little bit of time. Um, also, uh, we could, uh, if it looks like the search pattern, so if, uh, you know, it's it's a similar pattern, we could actually search for that. So it could actually, you know, if you've um, created a uh, typo or if you're, you know, you're looking for something of, uh, you know, kind of a specific, uh, you know, text type, then it would actually return anything that kind of looks like the pattern. Um, so, you know, that might be helpful in terms of, you um, uh, science where, you know, we have a lot of base, uh, base words that are the same. You can actually just search by that and, and return all of the, 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 uh, text that is similar to those words, but yeah, we're going to do an exact match here. Um, next you're going to choose the, the word that you're looking for. Um, and yeah, you have other things for like case sensitivity, you can include bookmarks, uh, you can include your own comments. So, you know, if you want to make sure that, uh, your, the, the words you've actually created are, are being searched as well, you can add that as well. Uh, but yeah, so let's, um, run through these documents. So as you can see, we ran through them pretty quickly. So we had uh, five documents and I think that represents several hundreds of pages of documents, uh, but it actually found every instance of the word area. So a lot of these are actually like science documents. So, you know, we have, um, you know, uh, mathematics trying to find area, physics, you know, for area, uh, but it actually gives you a little bit of a breakdown of, uh, you know, every uh, usage of the word you're looking for. So rather than, you know, having to click through every single, you, uh, you know, every single instance of a word, you can actually kind of get uh, a general idea of what's, you know, surrounding that, that word. Um, so, you know, area of a rectangle, area of a cube, you know, kind of, kind of uh, more easily, uh, you know, kind of search through these things. And also, again, it, it gives you all the documents that have these, uh, have these um, words. So, um, you know, uh, multiple documents, you know, have have the term area, and I don't actually have to have all of these open right now. I can actually just, you know, find the document that I, uh, you know, need the word. So let's just say it's this one. I can just click on it right now, and it'll open that document up instantly. Um, so yeah, so it saves uh, saves a lot of time on 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 searching for through multiple books. Uh, you know, most classes, especially higher education, have uh, multiple book requirements for for uh, learning. Um, so, you know, the students are definitely going through multiple documents and textbooks and uh, digital textbooks to, to find specific ideas they, they need. And, you know, this is a great tool to, to help with, uh, you know, kind of cut down on some of that time. 
Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah. Once you actually, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go back to. Oh yeah, of course. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, another great uh, tool that we uh, use, of course, uh, for studying a lot is highlighting. Um, highlighting uh, information is probably the most used comment tool that we have, uh, especially in education. You know, highlighting is probably the most simple tool. Uh, you know, just cover cover an area that you you know need to to remember for later, and then yeah, just click highlight. Um, we have uh, multiple places where you can do a highlight. You know, you just right click actually, and then click highlight. Um, if you just hover hover above, you know, a uh, selected text. It'll also actually, it'll also just give you a little option there. Uh, you can change change the color immediately. And, uh, you know, a lot of people like to have a specific color for specific uh, ideas. Um, so you know you can color code your your highlights and everything. Uh, but one one great use of uh, of uh, highlighting is actually being able to save specific information for later. So uh, this is great usage if you are um, you know writing writing a paper and you need to uh, quote multiple sources and uh, you need to be able to uh, kind of reference those sort of sources later. You know put a, put together a bibliography and everything. Uh, you want to want to be able to like more easily uh, organize these. Uh, highlighting uh, works because you can actually uh, export your highlights. So the text of your highlight. Um, to its own document. So as I let me throw another highlight on there. Um, so as I, I can go right here on my comment section again, uh, go down to export. Um, and as I can see, there's a couple options. Uh, I could export my comments, uh, the selected comments, or could export my um, highlighted text. So I'm gonna do my highlighted text. So these are the you know the the portions I felt like are special. Um, give you a couple options too. You can do it as a CSV file if you want a little bit of uh, structure to it. So you can uh, you know kind of. Uh, if you're doing a lot of highlights, you know, you might or like financial work or, um, you know, mathematics where, you know, you have a, you know, a lot of different uh, numbers, you know, you might want it in a CSV file or you can just do it in a text file if you just want to, you know, kind of have a way to look at it. Um, so I'm just going to put it into a text file. All right. So as you can see, it gives you a breakdown of the the uh, not only the text that you have uh, highlighted, but the page uh, that it, you, it can be found on. Uh, so again, you know, this is great for creating bibliographies. You know, rather than um, you know having to do it you know right on the fly, you can kind of do it. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> there we go. Uh, you kind of do it a little bit faster rather than uh, you know like creating your bibli bibliography as you go. You do it later. Um, so you, all you have to do is create the highlights. And then extract it, and then look back. Uh, you know, you have the exact text and everything. Then you can look back for the page. Um, it's going to save you a lot of time with, uh, yeah, with uh, creating bibliographies and creating references. Um, so yeah, um, another great tool uh, just for uh, extracting general data too. You know, just for the information. You know, you're you're deciding. You know, what what information is most useful, um, and then you can kind of gleam it uh, on its own. Um, you know, with outside the context of the rest of the the document, so you know that can be very helpful for for uh, you know not only yeah, references but also yeah just studying for your history exam or yeah math math exam or anything like that um, might be good to just put all those notes into one place. Um, so yeah, we 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 are looking mostly at uh, uh, notes from textbooks that are uh, you know are highly organized and uh, the scans are really really impressive or you know really really. Um, solid scans, you know, they're 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 clear and everything. But what about instances where you know you aren't given um, you know uh, a very clear scan? So you know, students again are using their cell phones more than ever uh, to create digital documents. You know, they they uh, might have to uh, take a picture from uh, a friend's notes. You know, if they're collaborating on notes, or they might be you know uh, copying a picture from a, a textbook. Um, or even taking a picture of, uh, you know, their handwritten notes or, or your whiteboard, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, students will take a picture of a whiteboard uh, before they leave a classroom just to, to, to save that information. Um, so a lot of it's being done on a phone. So, you know, converting, converting these uh, is just as easy as converting any scanned uh, documents. So uh, let's actually, um, let's combine documents into one piece. I'm going to, um, where is my combine? Search it. Say. <laughs> exactly what tab it's under. All right, let's go combine file. All right, so we're going to combine multiple files here. So we actually have a scanned images uh, folder. Uh, these are so these are actually my my real notes uh, from when I was in school. Um, but yeah, so these are uh, documents that I I, I took uh, handwritten notes and I I just took a picture with a with a phone. Um, so, you know, the the shading can be a little bit off and, uh, you know, it can be a little bit 
uh, difficult to read, but we're gonna we're gonna turn this into a PDF and see what we can do with them. Um, all right, so this this uh, is actually combining all of these images into one PDF document. Uh, so before they were you know separate separate image files, uh, they're all uh, being converted to PDF and and uh, put as as a single document, um, you know, to save time and effort. Um, so as you can see, yeah, it's a uh, very high quality videos because they came from an iPhone. So you know, it's got it's got a uh, pretty pretty solid um, you know, pretty solid. Uh, uh quality so you know it's easy to zoom in and everything um but yeah so uh we could actually uh get a kind of a more bird's eye view of all these documents right here on our left side panel um so you know you can kind of walk through all your all your uh pictures quickly um it also makes it very easy to um you know organize your documents so you know you can actually just click and drag pages if you want to move them around um if you want to extract pages you can actually just you know select multiple like you would with uh you know your control click um right click on them and then extract um, so, you know, it gives you a couple more options here, make sure, you know, the pages are chosen right. Um, and, yeah, directly extract those documents into, you know, a smaller document. So, yeah, when you're looking at hundreds of pages of, of notes or hundreds of pages of a uh, textbook, you might only want a, a chapter or, uh, you know, a certain couple of pages, uh, you know, you can easily extract those out uh, to, to its own file. Um, but, yeah. Um, so, so as you can see, again, these are just uh, images, you know, not uh, some of them has text, some of them are handwritten notes. Um, but we could still we could still uh, do OCR like we did for other the other document here. Um, so let's do a quick OCR on this. Um, so yeah, so this will this will go through the document again. And even though these uh, these uh, uh, images are like far less uh, you know high quality, uh, it's also at an angle. You know, like this is probably about a two or three degree you know uh, shift from from uh, you know the proper uh, horizontal. Um, so, you know, we're, we're still going to be able to actually convert this text into um, searchable text and even editable text if we wanted to. Um, but we're just going to do searchable for the for this uh, presentation. Um, but yeah, so so that again, that could be very helpful for for students who are, you know, using their phone as a scanner and don't have access to a photocopier, which again, whether or not a student has access to a photo photocopier, the likelihood that they know how to use a photocopier might be low. So, um, yeah, so the, this is a great tool for that. Um, so as you can see um, now, um, oh, looks like. Just hang it for a second. Um, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, well. oh there we go. <laughs> Sorry, I just took a couple extra seconds on these uh, files. They're they're quite big because uh, they're they're you know they're shot with a uh, with a camera and they weren't weren't compressed. Uh, so it takes a couple extra seconds to um, convert them. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, it is now completely converted. Um, so we can go back up to our uh, search. Take an extra second. Okay, there we go. All right, so like the word circuit, there you go, like already uh, coming up right there. Um, so yeah, so this this was just an image from a taken from a cell phone. It's now a searchable document um, that you know, like just just as if you had done it with an actual um, an actual photo scanner. Um, so yeah, so it's a uh, very very helpful um, for for uh, yeah for for any student who doesn't have access to a a scanner. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know. It, these these pages are great. You know, you can do notes directly onto them. But what if you wanted to look at all of these pages as one um, together rather than you know some, uh, individual pages? A lot of these are again um, uh, figures that that are related to to uh, other pages on documents. So you say you want to create some sort of relationship between these two. So uh, yeah, you can use our uh, PDF editor printer actually and uh, do this. So yeah, go to file and go down here to print. Um, it's going to bring up some options for us. So. Uh, right here, it's, it starts off with, you know, just saying, assuming you want to do just one page. But right here under uh, print handling, you can actually do multiple pages onto one. Um, so you, you get a little bit of uh, options. Oh, let's do all pages. There we go. So you get some options on on, on the pages. Um, you can also uh, uh, decide some spacing. So if you want to create um, um, some um, some margins between the documents, you can actually create them right here. So this gives a one inch margin to um, each side of the document. Can actually, uh, I think it actually normally gives you 0.2 inches, but you actually go to, uh, you know, the individual side that you want. So if you just wanted, uh, you know, some bottom margin, you can actually just increase the bottom margin for that, um, that document. Um, but yeah, so if you just wanted to, you know, it to be, it to be, you know, standard throughout the whole document that you could just uh, change this. Go back to this. All right, so yeah, just give everything a standard one-inch margin. Uh, gives you a little bit of space to do some notes. So let's uh, let's print this out. 
Uh, so it's actually printing it as a as a PDF document. So um, uh, photocopy. <laughs> All right, so I can look back in my scanned image file. Um, and yeah, so you can see our, our PDF document has been created. Um, so yeah, so now you can actually see our our uh, our notes, you know, entirely as one one set of notes rather than individual notes. So it looks like I actually left one in uh, upside down. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, we can do a lot with this document now. We can actually, uh, you know, create, um, you know, some, for, for students who have uh, iPads, or uh, you know who who are using um, who are using uh, styluses on their on their computers or have touch screens and everything like that, uh, which is you know growing growing number of students you can actually you know use our use our stylus to create notes directly into the margin. Um, you know you can you can uh, create great uh, connections between these. Uh, if you want to if you want to use something a little bit more <laughs> you know not not uh, pencil, you want to use something with like shapes. We actually have um, different shapes that you can add. So you can go uh, you know add um, add shapes. You want to you know highlight certain sections, you know, put a box around it. Um, you can, uh, you know, do do other other shapes as well, like arrows. So if you want to, you know, create some sort of like arrow directly to something. That's a straight one. Oh. Yeah. You know, create different connections to, you know, different different uh, ideas if you want. Uh, so yeah, kind of kind of uh, take your take your uh, you know uh, uh, notes and add add uh, you know secondary notes upon them. Uh, you know, kind of kind of uh, yeah general overview of, of things you've gone over in, in class and everything um so yeah so this again again you can uh you can know, save this send it um um uh, you know uh ask ask for collaboration so this is great uh for collaborating with other students you know you can uh you know set up a lot of times people like to take notes together because it's easier you know save a little bit of time uh people can help you out with them and everything um so yeah so it's a wonderful tool to kind of look at all the notes all at once um so yeah, like like I said, collaboration is an important uh, part of studying and of learning. Um, so our our uh, PDF editor online tool actually has a uh, unique. Uh, let me actually go back to page. So unique to our um, PDF editor online is a collaboration tool. Um, so again, this is this is a tool that is available. Uh, for free for for students um, and schools uh, who want to sign up with with uh, Foxit Editor for for no cost at all. Um, so yeah, so if I want to open a document, uh, so yeah, it's very similar to our um, our desktop editor. Uh, it's going to have uh, you know full feature set of document tools. Uh, it's a little bit more lightweight though, um, just because you know it's a it's a browser based uh, service. So you know it it saves a little bit of time to make it a little bit more lightweight. Um, but yeah, so we, we but uh, you know a lot of the same um, a lot of the same features are are available. Um, so I'm gonna open up this uh, this one document. Um, so this is this is just a regular textbook document. So you know something you might need to collaborate with some students on or, or some other uh, some other classmates or anything like that. Uh, it makes it very easy to do that. All you have to do is go to share, and uh, gives you a couple options actually. Um, you can share uh, with the, a link. So you can create a link and decide if people can comment or view it. So, you know, if, if you want them to actually be able to uh, put comments and notes and highlights, yeah, you can, you know, set that. Or if you, you just want them to be able to read it, you can set that as well. Um, or you can share it directly through email. So if you know the, the collaborators' emails, you know, you can easily just uh, add their emails and they'll get a notification saying that they have access to it and they can go straight to it. Um, but I have actually already um, shared this link with our, our teams here. So let's... All right, there we go. So this is the collaborative version of that document. Um, as you can see, uh, it gives you a breakdown of all the users that have uh, added any uh, any notes or, or comments to it. So you know, it gives you um, you know who, who's who's committed uh, who's committed uh, uh, text or or notes or highlights or anything like that. Um, it also it gives you uh, so as you, as you can see, there are, are uh, comments and uh, notes made by other people. Uh, so all I have to do is highlight or uh, uh, hover over it and actually see who who created it. Um, so you know, the great great notes, great highlights, uh, uh, call out boxes. Um, so again, this is great for collaborating on 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 uh, projects or or reviewing uh, reviewing uh, papers. So you know, if you need to uh, make sure uh, you know. <laughs> spelling uh editing is, is all properly done so, uh, note citations you know you can do strikeouts all that uh could be done uh collaborative with your classmates 
Um, we also have, um, you know, the ability to kind of create just like white space. So, you know, for for um, kind of similar to uh, whiteboarding applications, which are becoming pretty popular among students for for um, editing document or for uh, you know creating documents or building kind of building uh, designs and things like that, or just doing notes. Um, so again, like if you have a a, uh, a stylus or or a uh, uh, um, you know a um, a uh, sorry <laughs> a touchpad or anything like that. Uh, that uses pens you can actually easily you know create great notes here on like a on a like a whiteboard type thing um other other users that you shared this can also add their own notes their own uh ideas you know text uh you know input text directly you know here's some text <laughs> um input input images uh you know uh, uh you know input notes input uh, uh links to other other documents other other websites and things like that um so yeah so a lot of a lot of very helpful collaboration tools um uh, that you know help students uh you know work together and of course that's you know what's help what helps them learn um and yeah so uh so this is actually available on our pdf editor online and again this is this is a product that we we offer for free for students uh, a lot of uh the other pdf editors that we went over uh don't have uh tools like this uh specifically collaboration um so you know this is something you're only going to get with a more uh robust um pdf editor and uh, you know the, the online tools are just are just not going to come with uh you know advanced tools like this um i don't know let me check out my okay oh yeah a couple of questions here um how long is it free uh i see one year uh, education pricing website oh uh, yeah so we actually uh do have um education pricing for for these uh, products, um, if you're buying them for your uh, school, uh, but we have a separate um, uh, offer for schools that want to just get um, the uh, PDF editor online or uh, to get licenses for their students for um, the desktop version. So uh, our, our full education license is actually um, a uh, full uh, full suite of our products. So you're going to get a PDF editor. For your desktop pdf editor online uh pdf editor mobile all in one license uh but the free program we have is actually um uh just just one of the products so you you choose between the editor online um the uh editor uh desktop and or uh, you know the mobile editor and uh we we give you uh one year of that for free and that's for however many users you have so this could be just for one classroom so if you're a teacher and uh you know you want to just uh, get licenses for 30 students we can offer that to you um but we also offer um actually sorry let me go back to my powerpoint <laughs> uh there we go here we go all right yeah so i'm gonna get it for my students um so yeah so we offer um so we offer a couple options yeah desktop uh online and mobile um but they're, they're individually separated when you do the free offer um so so uh you know you you choose which one works best for your environment so uh you know if you have a lot of uh chromebooks which i know a lot of k through 12 have um, you know, Foxit online PDF editor is probably the best option for that. Um, but if you have a lot of, uh, you know, students with personal uh, desktops, or maybe if you're uh, hoping to get this in the hands of graduate students, maybe the, the desktop editor is more the way to go because it's a little bit more of a robust service. And you can assume that most of your students have their own, uh, you know, desktop or laptop available. Um, so yeah, so uh, it's, it's really, it's, uh, it's the, you, you get to choose which editor you get and we'll give you a year's worth of uh, uh, licenses for however many students you need that for. Um, so for, for whatever option you choose. Uh, we also have different licensing options for this. So, you know, we have activation keys for the desktop. Um, so, you know, obviously it's hard to do that for online because, you know, how do, how do you do an uh, activation key for an online service? Um, but yeah, so for, for a desktop though, we uh, have activation keys. Uh, we also have domain-based access. So this is probably the easiest way to get access to your students uh, if you are providing them a uh, private domain. So, you know, our email address. So if you have like, you know, uh, Daniel Godfrey at, you know, school name dot, dot edu, uh, we can actually open up that domain to um, any user who is in that domain to, to get a license for, for the whatever, whatever uh, you know, software option you choose. Um, so that, that's available for, for all of the options. Um, it's, it's very low uh, administration cost. It's, it's no cost at all to you in terms of actual cost. Uh, but administrative administrative cost it's it's zero. Uh, any student who uh, you know is looking for a license um, can actually sign up for a license automatically uh, just by just by uh, trying to to log into one of our um, one of our products. Um, so yeah, so that that option is available to schools that have that uh, a private domain. Uh, we also have named licenses. So uh, you know if you we, if we want to set you up with. Um, 
uh, some named licenses where a student can kind of email you and uh, request being added on to to the um, to the uh, pool of licenses, and you can just add them there. So yeah, a lot of options for for uh, licensing for for schools that are interested in this. Um, you know, if, especially if you if, again if you have the private domain, it makes it very easy. All you have to do is give us a um, email address of a of an administrator and the email domain that you want the access to be opened on, and we'll take care of the rest. And yeah, you don't have to worry about licensing. Uh, or uh, provisioning licenses to your students or anything like that. All you have to do is let them know that they have this access and then go uh, access it themselves. Um, so yeah, so I, uh, you know, th this this is what they would be doing most of the time anyway. If you were, uh, if they were, if they were looking for their own solution, you know, they, they would go online and look for whatever free solution comes to them. Uh, this solution is a lot more uh, safe and secure. You know, we don't sell data. We don't sell. Um, uh, we don't sell uh, uh, advertisements. So, you know, you're not going to be bombarded with advertisements. You're not going to be asked to sign up for, you know, the 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 next, uh, you know, unlock anything. Uh, there's no paywalls. There's none of that. It's just a full solution for your students. And, uh, you know, it's it's a completely free solution um, that they can sign up for. Let's see if we have some right. more. That's really a wonderful thorough discussion there, um, Daniel. Well, I think um, there are questions also here that's asked, like, how are the documents stored and are they stored in U.S. servers? Yeah, okay. Uh, that's a great question. Our documents are stored in U.S. servers. Uh, we try to store documents as little as we can. So, so uh, when we do some of the services on the documents, we'll 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 uh, transfer them to a uh, you know a server that will perform a certain like you know a OCR, so optical character recognition. Uh, they will. Uh, perform that that service and uh, you know once once that service is done the the documents no longer used and deleted um, but we, when we do uh, store sir uh, when we do uh, you know, have need to uh, store your documents um, they will be stored on U.S. servers absolutely um, and those are those are in uh, Amazon um, uh, Amazon uh, cloud services so yeah, it's it's uh, east east coast based. Uh, we have a backup server as well in, uh, on the west coast, uh, just in case there's any, any uh, outage or um, you know uh, any issue with with that. Uh, so yeah, your documents are very secure, um, and they stay within uh, the United States or or the region in which you're you're applying. Uh, some some other kind, like if you're in Canada, we we might have um, you know different servers for that. But um, yeah, if you're in the United States, your your documents would stay within United States servers. Right. Thank you so much. And for uh, activities that would require um, their e-signature, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, teachers would be signing these documents or as a way to confirm that they receive this or requiring their students to um, get these documents signed. Is mm -hmm. e-sign included when you purchase the PDF editor software? Oh uh, yeah, we, uh, so we do have a uh, PDF uh, or, or so eSign software that uh, is available for purchase. Um, it is um, a it's a separate purchase from our PDF editor, so you can actually buy them separately to uh, you know from each other. Uh, we have a bundle as well that puts them together. So if you wanted uh, both the PDF editor and you wanted uh, eSign envelopes, you can actually buy that for, with uh, discounted education prices. Uh, it's very competitive. It's, it comes to about a dollar. I think it was a dollar fifty, no less than that. Uh, seventy five cents, or sorry, seventy cents per per envelope. Uh, but yeah, we also have uh, enterprise uh, options for for like larger larger um, schools. Uh, so like if you're sending around a thousand um, e sign envelopes a year, uh, we have a, a separate enterprise uh, Fox and Sign uh, product um, that you can purchase. Um, but yeah, so uh, that that is not included with uh, you know the the free offering. Although we do have um, you know um, it's not e signature, but it's like fill in sign um, or or um, or um, um, or uh, sorry um, uh, certificate back signatures. So we do have a couple of signing options if you just want to put put in a signature um, into a PDF document that are available through our free. Um, editors that we we offer to students. Um, so you know there there are, there are signing options. They're just a little less secure than the e-sign um, you know product that we we sell separately. All right. Well, thank you so much once again um, for this wonderful discussion, Danielle. For sure, our teachers and the rest of the, the, their students would be able to take advantage of this opportunity or this uh, platform. And so everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, yeah, someone I, from, yep. And one, uh, one last uh, comment. Uh, we actually will be sending out a survey 
uh, that um, asks you a couple questions and gives you an op or the opportunity to sign up for our uh, our free services. So yeah, please, please, if you're interested at all, uh, yeah, just fill out that it's a really quick survey, just gives you a little bit of information or gives us a little bit of information about you. And then we can, uh, you know, get you started on, uh, you know, getting signed, your students signed up for, for a free PDF editor. All right. Yep, Thanks. definitely. Thank you so much, everyone, once again, for joining us in this webinar event. Um, may you all, may we see you again on the next event that we will be launching. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day ahead. Bye. Thank you.